I'm Mike Hanawald, field agronomist with Bex Hybrids. Here in a cornfield, um, we've got a field of 5140 here that we're uh, standing next to today. Um, just starting to shoot tassels. And a lot of our corn in northern Ohio has either already tasseled or is beginning to uh, shoot tassels and, and uh, is approaching that, that critical stage of pollination. Now, as we approach this stage, a common point of discussion that comes up is fungicide. And a lot of farmers um, automatically spray a fungicide on every field every year. And some may have never sprayed a fungicide on corn before. And, and then everything in between. There's a lot of different opinions on fungicide. But I wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about that today and um, how not only to decide when to make a fungicide application, but how to make that application as pro um, best potential of it being as profitable as possible. So uh, first thing is uh, just looking at the growth stage that we have of the corn. So I pull the stalk out here. You can see we've got that tassel fully emerged. And when you look at our PFR results, uh, you'll see that um, VT uh, is the time over multiple years of testing that we found to be most consistent to apply fungicides as opposed to earlier on in the season, um, mainly because we're at a, a critical yield producing uh, growth stage here. Um, but it's interesting that we, uh, a few years ago, we looked, I uh, did a study in PFR where we looked at uh, multiple growth stages besides just VT. So going clear up to the R3 growth stage, um, R3 is defined as the milk stage. Um, it's kind of like when that ear looks like a, a ear of sweet corn. Uh, where it's the, the kernels are milky but haven't begun to dry out yet, and the silks are, are brown and dried at that point. So um, that milk stage, R3, or brown silk stage. And what we found in that study was um, that we saw the same benefit to applying fungicide all the, um, all the way through all those growth stages um, as what we did applying just the VT. So it implies that we've got a little bit wider window to work with when it comes to applying a fungicide. And I think that's really important to know for us, especially towards um, the northern areas of the Corn Belt here in northern Ohio, where diseases tend to move in a little bit later. And so this field here, um, we have really clean leaves at this point. We're not seeing any disease out here yet. Um, and 5140 has pretty good disease tolerance, and so we would expect that. Um, but even in some more susceptible hybrids that we've looked at, we really haven't seen a whole lot yet, uh, which is a really good sign. But our weather conditions have been very conducive to disease. Uh, just a little bit ago, a rain shower came through here, and there just looks like another one uh, brewing up. We've had a lot of rain and a lot of uh, wetter conditions here across the northern part of the state, and those, those wetter conditions lead to the, the development of disease. So it's something we're going to want to keep an eye out for. So my recommendation is start with your most susceptible hybrids. Uh, we've got a, a guide on our, our website that has the, the fungicide ratings, or you can talk to your BEX uh, dealer or seed advisor, and they'd be happy to help you identify which hybrids are most susceptible um, to disease. Start with those and keep an eye on them. And once those tassels come out, we want to be scouting that field at least once a week and look for that disease. If we see a disease show up, um, then we want to go ahead and pull the trigger to uh, spray a fungicide. But it's important to think about where the disease is showing up on the plant. So when we're scouting, we typically want to start from uh, start here at the ear and go two leaves below. So one, two. So we're going to look at from this point of the plant on up. Um, the lower leaves really don't contribute a whole lot to yield. And so if we get a little bit of gray leaf spot or something else down there, it's not that big of a deal. Um, but we're looking um, from two leaves below the ear and up. Uh, the main diseases we're going to be looking for are gray leaf spot, which are small brown lesions that you can see in the picture there on your screen. Uh, Northern corn leaf blight has larger, longer gray lesions. Um, and then the other one is, is tar spot. And we, tar spot hasn't been a big player in Ohio yet, um, but it has been a big deal um, up in Michigan, just north of us. And we want to keep an eye out for that one in case it decides to, to show up. Now, if you make the decision to spray, either to spray to um, go after a disease that you see in the field or to spray proactively as a preventative measure, um, then it comes to the, uh, making a decision of which fungicide do you use. We have several uh, fungicides that are PFR proven. We've tested them at least three years and they've paid for themselves on average over the three year period. And uh, they're a great place to start. But you don't have to limit yourself just to this list that you see here on the screen. Uh, one important thing to note is on the chart that you're looking at, you'll see that I've um, outlined um, di the different modes of action that each fungicide provides. And that's kind of the consistent factor in which fungicides make the PFR proven list is that they contain multiple modes of action. So whichever uh, actual chemical you choose, make sure it contains multiple modes of action. It's going to be most effective at um, not only controlling disease that's here, but preventing future disease. And that also reduces our chance of developing uh, resistance um, to that fungicide, just like we might see you know, resistance to weeds with a herbicide. We don't want that to happen to our fungicide technology either. 
So you've selected a fungicide, you've decided to spray. Um, the next thing to think about is how to make that application. And so a um, couple things we've learned in PFR. So first thing is the time of day that you make the application, or probably more importantly, the, the temperature and weather conditions. Um, spraying in the morning when there's a dew has shown uh, a little bit of an advantage that you can see there on your on your screen on that the graph here, uh, where we've seen a, a small, it's a modest yield gain, but still a yield gain by spraying in the morning when it's cooler. Um, the stomata on the plants are open and more receptive to taking that fungicide in. And then that dew helps to spread that fungicide across the leaf and uh, help to distribute across the leaf and give us better better protection there. So spraying in the morning or in cooler temperatures has been, been more beneficial. Um, the other thing comes down to uh, carrier rate. Now I know with, if you're using an airplane or a, a helicopter, um, that's going to limit uh, your carrier rate ability there. Um, but if you have a ground rig and you're able to be out spraying, running a little bit higher, higher carrier rate, 15 to 20 gallons, um, is definitely showing some advantage, again, to get better coverage of that plant um, and get that fungicide able to uh, control uh, more of the surface area and uh, protect that plant a little bit better. Um, the last point I want to make um, briefly is if you're going to be making the application, is there anything else that you should be adding into that, uh, into your spray tank? And so there are actually two PFR proven products, um, foliar feed products that we've tested with a fungicide at VT or later. And um, there's uh, two different products here, but the common theme among both of them is they both contain some boron. And boron is a micronutrient, so we don't need large amounts. Um, but it's usually one of the more common ones that we end up deficient in later in the season. Uh, corn needs quite a bit of boron um, as, it, as it finishes out uh, here in the grain fill uh, stage. And so it's important to, to provide it, but it also um, isn't very stable in the soil. It's a lot like nitrogen, it can leach away. It's hard to, to build up in the soil. And so um, applying some boron late uh, has, has shown a nice uh, yield boost and some, some ROI there. So again, doesn't necessarily have to be these specific products that we've shown in, in PFR, but, but that um, boron uh, might be a good thing to consider adding to the spray tank. So as you make your decision, if you um, have any questions or would like any additional information, uh, feel free to reach out to your Bex dealer, seed advisor, or even myself, and we'd be more than happy uh, to help you through uh, your specific situation. Um, thanks a lot and best of luck.